Hey, shalom, brothers and sisters. Uh, this is Brother Steve coming back with another video. I hope everybody's doing good today. I uh, wanted to come here with a very, very important uh, and critical message. Uh, two points. I want to uh, basically go into the story of Joseph. Now, brothers and sisters, we all know the story of Joseph uh, in terms of his tribulation and trials. Uh, the betrayal from his brothers. Uh, the accusation from Pharaoh's wife. Uh, his imprisonment. Uh, you know, Joseph went through through uh, uh, many afflictions uh, in his time in the land of Goshen, or Pharaoh's house, or Egypt, if you will, land of Israel. Uh, brothers and sisters, I'm not going to go into this story uh, too in depthly because most of you are, are well aware of the trials and tribulations of Joseph. Uh, essentially. I want to basically bring a very, very important message in terms of what I call uh, uh, vindication and restoration, okay? So, brothers and sisters, I, would, I want to go into vindication and restoration, all right, um, in terms of Joseph. Now, brothers and sisters, I felt compelled to talk about this uh, today to, to y'all, okay? Um, earlier today, you know, I made a few videos talking about um, uh, the accident that I witnessed uh, with a young sister and uh, the narcissistic reprobate man that that hit this young lady you know if y'all haven't seen that video you know go check it out i recorded it a couple of, uh, hours earlier today you can take a look at it um but a little bit after that i was uh uh just thinking about all the things that the most high has has uh uh, uh allowed me to experience in terms of my mission, my mission, uh, brothers and sisters, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to talk and I'm just going to just talk freely. Uh, restoration and vindication. When you think about vindication and restoration itself here, what comes to mind? I mean, to vindicate is what? One who is vindicated, I would say, is one who, uh, well, just like in a court of law, when, when you have charges brought to you, uh, 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 there's a level of allegement, uh, there's a trial, uh, then there is a decision uh, made. Uh, it goes either way. If, uh, if you are innocent, uh, you are vindicated of all charges, and then you are uh, set free. Okay, if you're guilty, well, obviously there's a punishment and a sentencing. So that in itself is, is vindication, okay? But for most of us, uh, vindication in itself, when it comes to uh, operating as, as a believer, okay, uh, the vindication aspect uh, doesn't come until it's, Somewhere down the road, after a course of serious events, life-changing events, uh, you then have a level of restoration. Now, the restoration in itself is basically the Most High God putting back, putting the pieces back uh, of your life back together. Because we all know that in the walk, of, in a walk, we we lose things. At least we think we're losing things, but essentially, for the most part, it's the Most High removing things that just don't need to be there. Uh, uh, he's, he, he tears things up, brings you low, builds you back up, uh, puts you in the wilderness, so on and so forth. And many of you have experienced that. So, brothers and sisters, I feel very, very compelled to talk about that. And I like to utilize and use Joseph as that particular uh, example for the teaching. Um, but once again, brothers and sisters... I want to point out two very, very critical parts, okay? So, brothers and sisters, for those of you who have your King James Version Bible, let's open it up, please, okay? Uh, let's go to chapter 50 
and uh, uh, that's going to be chapter 50, and I'm going to start at verse um, 11, okay? I'm going to start at chapter 50, verse 11 through 26. And as usual, uh, brothers and sisters, I'm going to read, and then I like to expound in terms of the message of this particular video, okay? Uh, the vindication and restoration aspect of uh, uh, Joseph. Now, once again, uh, the Most High had a mission for Joseph, and Joseph being uh, gifted, uh, blessed and anointed, not knowing what would be befall him in, in his uh, walk. Uh, once again, undergoing a lot of very, very serious uh, trials. Uh, and for, for most people, some of the trials that Joseph went through, for most of us, uh, you know, we, we probably wouldn't have been able to uh, survive, you know, especially in the time that Joseph lived, okay? Uh, very, very, he, he endured a, a lot of cruel punishment, mm -hmm. including uh, one of the most afflictions of betrayal from his brothers, right? So, let me start off by reading uh, verse 11, okay? And it states here, okay, this is chapter 50, once, once again, for those who are coming in the video, uh, this is chapter 50, uh, verse 11, and it states, And when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the morning in the floor of Atad, they said, This is a grievous morning to the Egyptians. Wherefore, the name of it was called Abel Mezriam, which is beyond Jordan. And his sons did unto him according as he commanded them. For his sons carried him into the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Mechpelah, which Abram or Abraham bought with the field for a possession of a burying place of Ephron the Hittite before Mamre. And Joseph returned into Egypt, he and his brethren, and all that went up with him to bury his father. And after he had buried his father, now check this out, brothers and sisters, point one. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. Let me stop there. I would say that the event of their father passing away, I would say that when you look at some of the families, some of our families, um, uh, when it comes to death, uh, the loss of life, there's always a period in some families where there's a mourning and when there's mourning you also have a level of anger and emotions of things that occurred before that person passed away okay well I've seen a lot of different escalations with with many families where uh, because of the misunderstanding or, or transgressions or offense offenses uh, usually during death, uh, you have a lot of uh, turmoil, inner turmoil, individually and turmoil externally with the, with, the, with the families. Well, in this in this example here, Joseph's brothers uh, assumed, based upon their treatment and their dealings with their brother Joseph, that Joseph would take vengeance, okay? And usually, brothers and sisters, usually, uh, you know, with some families after death, um, 
there tends to be what I call uh, individual or collective uh, retaliation towards a, a member within a family based upon uh, unforgiveness. And we've all seen those type of escalations. I mean, we see it all the time. We hear it on the news um, where families are fighting, uh, fighting one another, going against another, when really that's not really the root. See, the death in itself of, of that lost, lost one uh, permeated the anger that was already there. So Joseph's brothers had this particular uh, uh, assumption. They assumed that based upon the treatment of what they did to their brother, that their brother Joseph, Joseph would take vengeance. Well, um, it did not happen. Let's, uh, let's continue on, okay? Now, this is going to be verse uh, 16, okay? It states here that, And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of the Most High God. Let me stop there, brothers and sisters. Let me stop there. Joseph being second in, uh, second in command of uh, Egypt, Pharaoh's house, being a prime minister, uh, Zephenith Panea. That's the name that was given to Joseph by uh, Pharaoh. You would think that it, at this critical point in time that Joseph would enact but you see here that the message that was given from his father was to forgive thy brothers. Brothers and sisters, I have to bring this to you and I have to say this. And I have to emphatically emphasize the importance of forgiveness. See, brothers and sisters, many of you want vindication and restoration. And that's understandably so. You want to be vindicated. And you want to be restored. Some of y'all are still holding on to a hard heart. Yes, you are. Some of y'all. Not all. See, the Most High can't vindicate you and restore you. See? Because to vindicate and restore would require complete transformation and metamorphosis of the mind and the heart. See, brothers and sisters, those that seek vindication and restoration after offense, anger, and pain, uh, if they were to receive the vindication and restoration, Before its proper appointed time, according to the Most High's will, there are those that would utilize the spirit of vengeance against their brother and sister. And that's why it's very important to forgive. See? 
I myself have had a very, very, see brothers and sisters, I'm going to keep it real. I've, I've had a difficult time with that in myself. When I look at the experience of Joseph, I, I pray to the most high and I ask the most high vindication and restoration. Vindication and restoration. Full vindication, full restoration. See, the Most High God has had to deal with me, brothers and sisters. Ahaya. Ahaya has had to deal with me. I'm not afraid to admit that. I'm only flesh and dust. I'm only flesh and dust. When I look at all the people whom, uh, uh, when I think back and look at all the people who have taken, uh, that made a lot of decisions uh, uh, against me in, in my past, uh, that really, that really shook me to the core. I, uh, Well, I'm always reminded of, of what I've done. What I've done. Here's the thing. When you're studying scripture and you're developing a relationship with the Most High, He takes you through a process. See, brothers and sisters, he has to clean us up. Even being in this truth, you understand what I'm saying? He has to clean us up. See, we can't get the land of Jordan. See? There's a lot of things that we have to be purged from. And most of that is unforgiveness. See, we sometimes think of that sin nature as being in the flesh and the most high. See, we all got sin. We live in a physical body. We came into a, a fallen world. So sin, 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 sin. Look, yes, you keep the commandments. You forgive. You love thy brother. You walk by faith. You speak life. You do all those things, right? But understanding that it's, a procedural process. And the Most High God is not going to provide vindication and restoration when you want it. Especially when it's not in its proper time. See, the Most High is perfect in all things. And in order for Him to do those things, we have to make sure we're in proper alignment. For Joseph, well, his vindication came. He was given a new name, Zephineth Bania. He was given control of Pharaoh's house, second command, prime minister, so on and so forth, interpreting dreams. So the Most High God was, was utilizing him uh, uh, mightily. So I'm here to tell you, Brother Steve is here to tell you the same thing, brothers and sisters, for those right now who are waiting on their Joseph experience. It's coming. It's coming. When it comes, brothers and sisters, I pray that you've forgiven those who have brought aught in offense against you. See, get to that place to where no matter what's transpired, what has happened, you can honestly say to yourselves that the Most High God has empowered you supernaturally to move mountains. Your enemies will see. They're going to see you. I myself not afraid to admit that and still waiting for that particular uh, experience of Joseph. And I plan to utilize it for the most high's will, for the will of Christ. 
when my time, when the Most High feels that he's ready to bestow full vindication and full restoration. And until he does it, I'm going to remain patient doing the work. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to finish reading this and then we're going to be done. Verse 20. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but the Most High God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Now, therefore, fear ye not. I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. And Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's house. And Joseph lived a hundred and ten years. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation of the children of Meshur, the son of Manasseh, were brought up upon Joseph's knees. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and this land unto the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from hence. So Joseph died, being a hundred and ten years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. So for some of y'all brothers and sisters, just like Joseph, the Most High is going to utilize you to nourish your enemies. That's right. And it's at that point you'll be able to show and, and exemplify and demonstrate Christ. Christ. It's at that point you'll be able to experience vindication and restoration righteously in its proper allotted time. All right? May the Most High God, Ahaya, Bashem Yeshaya, Wawawa, Kadesh, continue to bless every single one of you. And let the spirit of peace and rest go ahead of every single one of you as y'all travel to and fro. Brothers and sisters, I love y'all. Bless y'all. I'm very thankful to, to, to come at y'all. And uh, man, y'all already know. So, y'all have a good night. Shalom. Y'all stay up. Brother Steve, I'm out. Bless you. Peace.